Hi folks, welcome back to the shop here at Project Pine Hills. Today we're talking about this VTO Man power station. You can see it's rated at 1800 watts, 3600 watts peak. Let's take a quick look at the side of the box. You can see it has lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's better than traditional lithium batteries. And you can see it's big enough to run space heaters, toasters, ovens, and coffee makers. We're gonna test that out. You can also charge your laptop and smartphones. You can pause the video and check out these specs and you can see it weighs 38 and a half pounds. All right, here's the unit. You can see it has a handle on top. They also have one without a handle that's stackable, but I wanted one with a handle that was grab and go. Let's take a quick look at the front of this. Here we have two barrel connectors that go in. It's labeled input or DC 12 volts. That's where you charge this unit up. It has a charger that comes in this pouch. We'll check that out here in a minute. It's got a 328 watt charger that charges this whole thing up in four hours. You can also hook up two solar chargers to these two barrel connectors. Down here we have a DC power port. It has that car style plug you can put in there. And it also has two barrel connectors below it. So that's for things like car refrigerators, tire inflators, vacuum cleaners. You can see here we have the newer USB-C style connector and down here we have the older USB-A connections. We'll look at that. Over here we have AC ports. These are all pure sine wave ports. It says it right there at the bottom. That means it has clean power coming out of it, just as good as what you get from the power company. And over here we have two ports. The one here on the left, it says jumper cable. You pull that over, you can see it's got a keyed plug there. And you could take jumper cables like these standard cables here and they're keyed where they'll plug right in. And then you could use this to jumpstart a car. Now over here on the right side, we have a battery symbol here on this cover. If we pull that over, you see this is also a keyed port here. That's if you wanna run a cable and put an extended battery on here that the VTO man also sells that are nearly double the capacity of this unit. So that's an option as well on this port. Now you see when I plug those jumper cables in, this display came on. This will go off after so many seconds. Now if I wanna turn this on, you can see here on the front, there's three yellow buttons to turn on the ports in that area. So if I turn that on, you can see here it says DC on the display. That means these ports are enabled. If I press that button again, it turns off. If I press this button, you'll see now it says type C USB. That means these USB A and USB C ports are now active. And if I come over here and press this button, you see now it says AC. You'll hear the fan spin up. They have an exhaust here on the side. And now these AC ports are active. Now, if we look at the display, it shows you the capacity here on the left. So right now the battery inside this unit is charged at 66%. At the current watt usage, it has 99 hours of runtime. This hours estimate will change as you draw power from the unit. So we're gonna look at that. You also notice if I turn these ports off, the time estimate's gonna go away. That's a quick way to be able to tell that this unit is off. Now, if I had this unit on and I turn off all of the ports down here, it'll automatically shut off. But if I turn one of these ports on down here and keep it on, even though there's nothing plugged into it, this unit will stay on for eight hours. And what it does is for six hours, it just stays like this. Then after six hours, it begins to detect whether or not there's a draw on any of the ports. And if there is no draw for the next two hours, it shuts off at the eight hour mark. All right, so I'm gonna turn off this AC button and I'm gonna turn off this DC button here and just have the USB-C on. And I can take a USB-C cable, plug in here. Then I'm gonna plug in this Trustfire flashlight here. It has a USB-C port. Plug in right here on the side. You can see the red light comes on, it starts charging. And now you can see this flashlight is drawing five to six watts off these ports. So it tells you the draw, tells you the hours, the estimated time in which is left in the battery in the unit. Now both these USB-C ports can put out up to 100 watts. But if you didn't know, USB-C auto negotiates the amount of power a device needs. So this is only drawing the four watts that this flashlight needs right now. Now the great thing about these USB-C ports is they have enough power to charge a laptop with that 100 watt output. So I can take this laptop here, plug it in, and you'll hear it starts charging. You can see it's drawing 49 watts right now on the display, 52. Again, that's gonna auto negotiate and pull the amount of power that it needs. 30 watts, it's fluctuating. We can see the hours of runtime are updating, 36 watts, 54 watts. Again, a laptop's gonna draw a lot more power than a smartphone, of course. And it's settling in here right around 50 watts. That's what's really nice about this unit is you can charge larger devices like laptops. Now you can see we have 18 hours of estimated runtime at this 47 watt draw. All right, let's try this USB-A ports real quick. Take this USB-A cable here, I'm gonna plug it into the quick charge blue port that charges at 18 watts. Take the other end, plug it into a smartphone, and you can see it starts charging. All right, let's see how well the VTO man can run this shop coffee maker. Now I'm using this Keurig coffee maker because most standard coffee makers pull about 900 watts, but a Keurig can pull up to 1500 watts. So I think it'll be a good test for us. Now the first thing we're gonna do is turn off the USB-C ports. You can see that indicator goes off the display and I'm gonna turn on the AC ports and you hear the fan spin up just a little bit and then they spin down. I'm gonna plug in the Keurig. All right, I'm gonna turn it on. All right, now as it kicks on, you can see the wattage is starting to be drawn. 
getting up to near 1200 watts as it prepares the Keurig over here. There's 1200 watts. You can see our runtime changes. Now it's just showing an hour, but that's going to go back up because this is only temporary, this wattage draw. Now the wattage is starting to go down. We're down to 400 watts, down to zero watts. Now this is ready to make a cup of coffee. Let's see how it does for a cup of coffee. Now it's starting to make the cup here. And at this point, it's already heated up the water, so it's not going to draw a lot of watts. It does that in preparation for the cup. But you can see it has no problem running a Keurig coffee maker. Our estimate for time has gone back up to 99 hours. Oh, starting to draw some more watts. There it is at 1200 watts. It's going to do this for a little bit. This is going to go up and down. It's not constant. But it's great because you can actually see how much power these Keurigs pull. Again, we're right around 1200 watts. This VTO man has no problem supplying that current. It's finishing up that cup of coffee. The wattage has dropped back down to three watts here. The runtime estimate's going back up to 99 hours. As this finishes up, again, it's not drawing many watts, but it will go into a cycle here where it heats up the water again right after it's done making this cup. You can see here it draws at 1200 watts again. No problem supplying that power. And there we have a fresh cup of coffee from the VTO man. So I've turned off the Keurig, so it's not drawing any more power. I've got a nice hot cup of coffee here. So you can see how this could be used for tailgating or camping. No problem running this Keurig if you wanted to. I think it's a good example of how well it handles something that draws a variable amount of watts. All right, I also wanna take a look at how well this watt meter works on this unit. We're gonna put this kilowatt meter on the VTO man and see how accurate the wattage reading is. So I'm gonna plug this in. We're gonna press the watt button. And this kilowatt meter is powered from the VTO man. So you can see it's drawing five watts. So keep that in mind, this unit alone draws five watts by itself, but we'll get a separate reading here of how many watts the coffee maker's drawing. All right, so we're gonna unplug this coffee maker and then we're gonna plug it into this kilowatt meter. I'm gonna turn the coffee maker on. And as the coffee maker turns on, you can see it's drawing 1200 watts. Over here, we have a reading of around 1235. So you can compare how that did there. Now we're gonna go ahead and Put some hot water through here. All right, we see here it's starting to draw some watts. Kilowatt meter has it at 1245. Yeah, 1240 is over here. It's reading around 1200. So you can see a little bit of a delta there. Kind of compare those for yourself as we go along here in the video. So I think we did get a difference there between the two. We'll have to check out the video there. All right, we can see it's drawing again here. 1205 over here, 1240 something here. So there's a bit of a difference here in terms of what these two show. 1242, we got 1198 over there. What are we seeing there? About a difference of about 40 or so. 1238, got 1195. So a little bit of a delta between these two. Remember, we got to account for five watts of this draws anyway. So not a huge difference, but there is a little bit of a difference between what this reads and what the VTO man shows on display. All right, we're just going to get a quick reading on these AC ports. You can see what the multimeter is picking up. Now, if I turn on these AC ports, let's see what kind of reading we get. The fan spin up, and now you can see these ports have a reading of about 111 volts. And then if I turn them off, the voltage drops back down. So it makes a decent cup of coffee fast. Let's see how this jumper cable works. First, we're gonna press this AC button and turn off these AC ports. I've got a standard pair of cables here off a jump pack. They're off this Top Don Jump Surge JS2000. And these cables are keyed in a standard way. So you could use the cables off pretty much any jump pack that I'm aware of. So just open this up, take this cable and put it on here. And now you can use this to jumpstart a car. Now I haven't hooked this to a car battery, but it should detect the car's battery voltage and give you the necessary power to jump the car. They're kind of short, but you might want some longer ones. I'll have a link in the video description for that. But I'm gonna take them and hook them to this multimeter really quickly here. And because these aren't hooked to a battery, they're not outputting anything, but all these jump starters have a boost button on there. You can press and it outputs the jump start current no matter what. So if I press this boost button, you see the green light comes on. And now you can see that the cables are outputting 13.1 volts. So this will jump start a car regardless of the battery voltage in the car. All right, let's take a quick look around this unit. I'll show you here the sides. This is where the fans air passes through on this side and the other side. Look at the back, you'll see that we do have a work light here. But if we press this button, the light turns on low, press it again medium, press it again high. The fourth setting is a strobe light, and then the last setting is an SOS light. So it's five different light modes on this light. Press it again, it turns it off. Nice that it has a light included on the unit. You can also look here, I'll show you that real quick. You can pause the video and check out those specs, but it has those right on the unit. If you go around to the other side, you'll see a, another place for the fan to move air. 
and we're back around here to the front. Now, in terms of the size, let's look at that real quick. We measure across here, you can see it's about 14 inches. And from front to back, it's about 10 and a half inches. But I have a link in the video so you can check out those specs. So let's take a look at what it comes with. So it comes with this nice padded pouch. You can see it's got two zippers on it. Just lay it down flat, unzip it, flip it open here. You can see it has a large AC charger in it. So it's all laid out in here. This is for charging the unit. It puts out 328 watts. It can charge the unit in about four hours. And it comes with the AC power cord. Everything there is all together. We'll look at that here in just a second. It also comes with a USB-A to USB Type-C cable and a USB-C to USB-C cable. And it has also has this car adapter. You can charge with this as well. And we'll look at that here in a second. It also has the manual in here, very handy. But a nice pouch here for those items. I really like this. And like I said, it is padded, so, so it's a pretty good quality. Now it comes with this car cord. What you can do with this is plug this into one of these barrel connectors and you can plug this into your car and it will charge the unit up. And it takes between nine and 13 hours to completely charge the unit with this adapter cord. Let's take a look at this AC adapter or charging cable. We just plug this in over here, plug this into the unit, hook this up to one of the barrel connectors over here on the left. So I'll plug that in. And now you see it flashes when it's charging. You can see the actual wattage input over here. So we're 300 watts. So it shows an estimate of the amount of hours to a full charge, shows the charge percentage and the current wattage it's charging at. Right now it's showing 330 watts. And it can fully charge this unit in four hours. But it looks like right now it has an estimate of under two hours to charge this up. And this unit came with this nice set of decals in the box. So this is great for those higher wattage demands like refrigerators or freezers during power outages or a space heater or like you saw the coffee maker. So there you have it. It's a quick look at the VTO Man 1800 watt power station. I'll have a link in the video description so you can check it out. And let me know in the comments what you think of this power station. And please remember to like and subscribe. Those actions help me to continue to bring content to you here on the Project Pioneers channel. And with that said, I'll catch you in the next video.